Welcome to WMUL FM Training. I'm Mike Stanley. This is the 20th video in our series on Rivendell Radio Automation. This video will cover how to edit and ingest new audio into Rivendell Radio Automation using Adobe Audition 3.0. Please see the next video in our series, Video 21, Ingesting New Audio with Adobe Audition CC 2020, for instructions on how to use that software. Ingesting new audio by importing directly within Rivendell was covered in Video 18, RD Library Managing. There are generally four things you need to do to a piece of audio to make it ready for ingestion. Adjust the levels, trim the head, screen the lyrics and censor any inappropriate material, and finally, input the metadata. Throughout this video, I will call the audio a song. But this video applies to all audio, whether it is a song, a program intro, a news package, or whatever other audio you need to ingest. It would get annoying if I had to keep saying song, or program intro, or news package, etc. So for simplicity's sake, I will just say song. To begin, double click on the Adobe Audition 3.0 icon on the desktop. When the program starts, it will be in either edit mode or multi-track mode. We need it to be in edit mode, which is shown here. On the other hand, this is multi-track mode. If the program is in this mode, switch it over to edit mode. We can either click the edit button in the upper left hand corner of the screen, or click view, edit view. The next step is to minimize Adobe Audition and then click on this PC. Now navigate to Z Rivendell Import. Within this folder are dozens of subfolders. Each subfolder corresponds to one of the groups within Rivendell. Within some of these folders are more subfolders that correspond to scheduler codes. See Video 5, Carts, Cuts, Groups, and Scheduler Codes. Open the folder of the group and scheduler code into which you are ingesting audio. For this demo, we will select MISC or miscellaneous. Return to Audition. Next, we will check three settings in Preferences that will make it easier to prepare the song for ingestion. These are a few of my recommendations to make it easier to use Adobe Audition. If you are already familiar with Audition and prefer other settings, that is up to you. Click Edit, and then Preferences. This dialog will appear. For the first setting, click on the General tab. Go down to this option, Edit View Right Clicks. You want that to be Extend Selection. This setting makes it much easier to highlight part of the song for editing. For the second setting, click on the Display tab. You want this setting, Display Lines At, to say negative 18 dB. This setting makes it easier to set the Segway Start Timer in the song. The third setting is also on the Display tab. Uncheck this box that says Save Peak Cache Files. Unchecking this box prevents Adobe Audition from creating .pk files that needlessly clutter up the file system. Click OK to close the Preferences menu. This next step will depend on whether you are ingesting the song from a file on the hard drive or ripping the song from a CD. I will cover how to open a file first. Click on File and then Open. The Open File dialog will appear. Use the Look In control to navigate to the folder where your file is stored. Click on your file and then click Open. The file will open and the waveform will appear. That was how to open a song from an audio file. Next I will cover how to rip a song from a CD. If you are using one of the newer Optiplex 7070 machines, you must use the external CD drive in order to rip audio with Adobe Audition 3.0. 
This is due to a design defect in the SATA controller in the newer machines. Adobe Audition CC 2020 has no problems using the internal CD drives on the newer machines. If your machine does not have an external CD drive, you will have to find one that does in order to rip an audio CD with Adobe Audition 3.0. Insert an audio CD into the CD drive on the computer. Click File and then Extract Audio from CD. This dialog will appear. If there are not any tracks listed, you can change the selected drive using this control. If you are not certain which is the correct drive, just try them all. First we have to check the settings on this dialog. Make certain that the track selection radio button is selected, and make certain that extract to single waveform is unchecked. On the right hand side of the screen, make certain that generic Win32 is selected. Next we will select the track or tracks that we want to rip. To select more than one, hold down control while clicking each one. You can also click the select all or unselect all buttons. For this demo, I will select only track 16 because it is the shortest. Once you have selected all your desired tracks, click OK. It will take at least 10 or 15 seconds to extract each track. Once the tracks are ripped, the first track will be selected and visible in the waveform view. That covers how to rip an audio CD. If you opened more than one audio file, whether from a file on the hard drive or ripped from a CD, they will all be listed here in the Files tab. Double click on one to open it in the waveform view. This is a mock song for demonstration purposes. We can't use a real song due to YouTube's copyright restrictions. This mock song is based on a program intro. We'll pretend that it is a real song for the purposes of this video. Next I will cover how to do very basic editing using Adobe Audition 3.0. This is not a full editing tutorial. This is just a few basics you need to know to edit a song for ingestion. There are three types of edits that might need to be made. Adjust the levels, trim the head, and censor inappropriate material. Click inside the waveform to set the play cursor. Hit spacebar to play. Click to move the play cursor. Well, FM. Use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. If you place the mouse cursor over the decibel scale on the far right hand side, the mouse wheel will zoom the levels. Right click and then click zoom full to restore the default scale. First I will cover how to adjust the levels. We want the levels to be as close to zero as possible without going over. We do not want to mangle the dynamic range of the song by compressing or normalizing the song. We are only going to amplify the audio. Looking at the waveform, you can see that the song peaks around negative 9 dB. We will amplify by 8 dB. Click Effects, and then Amplitude and Compression, and then Amplify. Set it to 8 dB, and click OK. Look at the waveform to check that the levels stay below zero. Next I will cover how to trim the silence off the head of the song. We'll zoom in on the front of the song. As you can see, there are two seconds of silence at the beginning of the file. If I were to ingest this file as is and try to play it, this is what it would sound like on air. Two long, awkward seconds of silence before the song begins. To trim the head, click and drag your mouse to highlight the beginning of the file. If you need to adjust the highlight after you have released the mouse button, right click and drag to adjust what is highlighted. Hit space to listen to the highlighted portion. Hit the delete key on your keyboard to delete the highlighted portion.
There, that's much better. When I click play, the actual beginning of the song starts playing immediately. Next, I will cover screening the audio before ingestion. If the audio is from any entity outside of WMUL, it must be screened for inappropriate language prior to being ingested. See Volume 1 of the Operations Manual, Part 4, Chapter C, Inappropriate Program Material Policy, and Part 4, Chapter A, Section 3, Station and FCC Policy Sheet for What Language is Inappropriate. You must listen to the song in its entirety. Do not depend on your memory of what the song says or on internet song lyric sites. The content on song lyric sites is user generated and is thus incomplete, often erroneous, or may refer to a different version of the song. The FCC does not care what the internet claims the song lyrics are. They act based on the actual words that go over the air. You can use a lyric listing to follow along and help make sense of the lyrics but make certain that you are really paying attention to what the lyrics actually say. Let's listen to the fake song to see if there's any inappropriate language. For the purposes of this demo, we'll pretend that the word theater is a bad word. This is Theater of the Air. Okay, so we found a word that we need to censor. There are four ways to censor audio. In order from generally the best to generally the worst, they are vocal remove, reverse the audio, replace with noise, and mute. You will want to try different methods to determine which works best for your particular song. Vocal remove usually sounds the best, but it doesn't work on every song. It requires a real stereo recording. Do not waste your time trying to fake it by taking a mono recording and changing it to stereo. The vocal remove depends on the instruments being different in each channel but the vocals being the same. But you don't really need to know how it works behind the scenes in order for you to use it. Highlight the audio you wish to censor. Use the right mouse button to adjust what is highlighted. Hit play to listen to what you have highlighted. Theater. Hit shift R to listen to everything surrounding the highlighted portion. This is of the air. Uh to use the vocal remove, click effects, then stereo imagery, then center channel extractor. This dialog will appear. On the presets drop down box, select the final one, vocal remove. Click OK. Listen to the edited audio to hear how well the effect worked. This is the of the air. That worked to a degree, but it still left the first part of the word behind. Perhaps the plugin needs more audio to work with at the start. Let's undo and extend the highlighted part of the audio a bit. Now we'll try again. This is of the air. This is of the air. Okay, that thoroughly wiped out the word theater. That would be acceptable to play on air. This is a different file on which the vocal remove will not work. In this file, the center channel extractor will not work because the word theater is only in the left channel. This is theater of the air. This is theater of the... As you can hear, the word theater is nearly untouched. For this file, we will have to select a different method to censor the audio. We'll undo the failed vocal remove. The next method is reverse the audio. Click effects, and then reverse. Give it a listen. This is Thursday of the air. Okay, that worked. We'll undo again and demonstrate the next method, which is replace with noise. Click on generate and then noise. This dialog will appear. Set the color to white, the style to mono, and the intensity to 10. The intensity setting controls the audio level of the noise. 
you may want to try a couple of different intensity settings to find what sounds best. Click OK and give it a listen. This is of the air. A we'll undo again and demonstrate the final method, which is muting. Click effects and then mute. The audio will be completely muted. This is of the air. This is the final brute force method to censor the audio. Now we have switched back to the original file on which we successfully used the vocal remove. This is of the air, a dramatic presentation from WMUL-FM. Now that we've listened to the entire file and censored everything that needs to be censored, we can move on to the metadata. Hit Control-P on your keyboard to bring up the File Info dialog box. There are several tabs here at the top of the dialog. We want this one that says Cart. You can see that the various fields on this screen are all disabled. We need to check the box that says Include Cart Data when saving to WAVE. Now the fields are all enabled. There are numerous fields here, but only a few are used by Rivendell. For some of these fields, the exact meaning depends on what kind of audio you are ingesting. Title is the title of the work. For a song, that will be the title of the song, such as Bohemian Rhapsody. Do not include featured artists in the title. Even though many track listings attach the featured artist to the song title, they are part of the artist and therefore belong in the artist field. For promos and PSAs, use the individual title of the promo or PSA, such as Captain Pollution. Do not include the words promo or PSA. That will be obvious because it is in a promo or PSA group. For program imaging, use the type and role of the audio, such as game intro or break bed. For full length programs, use the individual title of that episode of the program or just the episode date, such as interview with Justin Case or December 3rd, 2020. For packages, use the title of the package, such as Changes for 50th Memorial. For this demo, we will put Demo Song Title. The next field is the Artist field. For a song, that will be the artist of the song, including any featured artists, such as Akon featuring m, &M. Always abbreviate featuring as lowercase f, lowercase t, period. For promos, use the subject of the promo. A general station promo will be just WMUL-FM. A sports promo would be WMUL-FM sports. For PSAs, use the general topic of the PSA, such as drinking and driving. For program imaging and full length programs, use the master title of the program, such as baseball or New Center 88. For packages, use the reporter who produced the package, such as an adapter. For this demo, we will put demo artist. The next field is the client ID. Type your name into this field. That's a record that you are the one who ingested the song into the system. Out cue is the ending of the item. For songs that will be either cold or fade. In the user defined text field, enter the year the song was released as well as any other relevant information such as instrumental or if it was dubbed from vinyl. The start and end date and time can be left as is, unless you need to set an actual start and end date. See video 19, cut day parting and rotation for a discussion of start and end dates. 
you must have either a complete set of start and end dates and times, or none of them. If some of the fields have information and some don't, the file will be rejected. The next item to set is the timers for the song's post and segue. I'll explain what those two terms mean as we get to them. Double click on one of these unused timers, it does not matter which one. The number on the dialog box will be one less than the number on the list. Even though I double clicked on timer 1 in the list, the dialog box says timer 0. The dialog boxes start counting at 0 and the list box starts counting at 1. In the timer ID box, select INT. Make certain that you select INT and not INT1 or INTE or any of these others. The INT timer tells Rivendell where the post is in the song. Within Rivendell, this is called the talk end marker. In a song, the post is where the lyrics start. If the song is instrumental, the post is the beginning of the song. In a promo, PSA, or program, the post is the beginning of the file. In program imaging, intros and rejoins, the post is the point where the talent should begin speaking. For program imaging, outros and break beds, the post is the point where the talent should stop speaking. If you do not already know where the post is, and you probably don't, just type in 01 for the time. We'll fix it in a moment. Click OK. Now, double click on another of the unused timers. Set this timer ID to SEGS, which stands for Segway Start. There are several other timers that all start with SEG. You want the final one that says SEGS. This timer will tell Rivendell where the crossfade or Segway point in the song is. Within Rivendell, this is called the Segway Start marker. When Rivendell reaches this point in the song, it will begin playing the next song. For songs and program imaging that end cold, the segue start is the end of the audio. For songs and program imaging that fades out, the segue start is the point where the music fades below negative 18 dB and stays. For promos, PSAs, and programs, the segue start is the end of the audio. If you do not already know where the segue start is, and you probably don't, just enter a few seconds before the end of the song. We'll fix it in a moment. If you look down here at this timer marked EOD, that is the actual end time of the file. Just figure a couple of seconds before this time. Click OK. The final item of note on this dialog box is down here at the bottom. Make certain that this control says write all metadata at the end of the file. Click OK. Now you can see the timers in the file. The INT timer is over here at the beginning, and the SEGS timer is near the end. Let's set the INT timer in the correct place. Listen to the song and find where the lyrics start. This is. Drag the INT timer to the correct place. Listen to it again to check your placement. This is... This timer does not need to be exact. The display gets rounded down to the next full second. Next, let's set the SETS timer in the correct place. Zoom in on the end of the file. These white lines are at negative 18 dB. We want to set the SEGS timer where the audio drops below negative 18 and stays. This also does not need to be exact. It will be rounded down to the nearest tenth of a second. This is another version of the file that has a long fade out. In this case, you would want to set the segue start here where the audio drops below negative 18. This long fade out would be difficult to hear in most listening environments. Now we have a file that is ready to ingest. We fix the audio levels we trim the silence off the head of the file, we censored the bad words, and we input the metadata. Click File and then Save Copy As. 
this dialog will appear. Use the save in control to navigate to Z, Rivendell import, then the group folder and scheduler code folder. In this case, MISC, short for miscellaneous. The file name can be nearly anything, but it will be recorded as the cut description, so keep it professional. Also, the importer remembers the file names that it has seen before and will ignore a file name that it has seen in the previous three minutes. For best results, use the artist and song title for the file name. Make certain that Save As Type is Windows PCM. Make certain that Save Extra Non-Audio Information is checked. That's the metadata we just spent a minute or so typing in and several minutes discussing. Click Save. Click over to the MISC folder in Windows Explorer. The file shows up here. Give it about 30 seconds to a minute for the importer to see it. The importer waits to make certain the file is finished saving before it does its work. The file will disappear. Now if we go over into one of the automation workstations and search RD library, we will find our demo song. If we open the cart and then edit markers, we can see the markers we set in Adobe Audition. The blue one here at the beginning is the talk end marker, what Audition called INT. The cyan one here at the end is segue start, what Audition called seg s. These red lines are at about negative 16 dB. The lines in Audition are at negative 18. It is not necessary to double check the markers when you ingest a file. I'm only showing you the screen so you can see the relationship between the timers in Adobe Audition and the markers inside Rivendell. You should double check that the metadata was ingested before you close the files in Audition. We'll cover failed metadata in a few moments. If the ingest failed, the file would still be here. In certain circumstances, the file name would end in .wave underscore failed. The most common cause of rejected files is a duplicate file name. Try a slightly different file name. The second most common cause is file corruption when saving. Try deleting the file from the import folder and resaving it from Adobe Audition. The third most common cause is metadata being in the wrong place. Hit Ctrl P to reopen the file info dialog box and double check that the final setting says write all metadata at the end of the file. This is only a problem when using Adobe Audition 3.0. The fourth most common cause is a partial start and end date and time. The file must have either a complete set of start and end dates and times, or none of them. If some of the fields have information and some don't, the file will be rejected. There is one other way that ingestion can fail, which is a metadata failure. In this failure mode, the file will be ingested, but the metadata will not be. In this case, the file will appear in RD library, but with a title similar to ingested from and then the file name. All the metadata will be absent. If I go into edit markers, you will see that even the markers are absent. This failure mode is caused by problems with the metadata. Unfortunately, the only way to correct this problem is to discard the metadata and re-enter it. First, we will write down some of the metadata. Hit Ctrl P to reopen the file info dialog box. Write down the values for the timers and any other metadata you need to remember. Next, we will resave the file without the metadata. Click File and then Save As. Use the Save In field to navigate to your folder. Give the file a useful file name. And this is the most important part, 
uncheck this box that says save extra non-audio information. In this case, we need to discard the metadata. Click Save. After the file is saved, click File and then Close to close the file. Now you can reopen the file and re-enter the metadata. This problem seems to only affect Adobe Audition 3.0. It seems that if the original file had some metadata already set before it was opened in Adobe Audition, then the new metadata will be saved in a way that Rivendell cannot understand it. Unfortunately, there does not seem to be an easy way to discover this until you look in RD Library. For our final topic, we will cover the special importers under Z Rivendell Import Special. There are several folders in here that use a different set of rules to import audio. The names of the folders include guidance on how that importer works. The first folder says DJ Image Cart Number Overwrites. This is a special importer for the DJ Image group. The name of any file written to this folder needs to begin with a six digit cart number. The importer will use that number to decide the cart number into which it will ingest the file. It will overwrite any existing cart that has that number. The next folder says GOSP Bull 006600 overwrites. This is a special importer for the Gospel Bulletin Board group. Any file written to this folder will be ingested into cart 006600 and will overwrite any existing cuts in that cart. This makes it easier to ingest a new Gospel Bulletin Board. The next folder says PRO Hourly Appends. Within this folder are two subfolders, Even Hours 003798 and Odd Hours 003799. These are two special importers for the Hourly Promos group. In this case, it appends the new cut to the existing cart. It does not overwrite any existing cuts within the cart. Any file written to the first folder will be ingested and appended to cart 003798, which is the cart containing all of the hourly promos for the even hours. As you might expect, any file written to the second folder will be ingested and appended to cart 003799, which is the cart containing all of the hourly promos for the odd hours. The next folder says Programs Cart Number Overwrites. This is a special importer for the programs group. It works the same as the previously discussed importer for the DJ image group, except it ingests files into the programs group instead of the DJ image group. The next folder says rotators, cart number, appends. This is a special importer for the rotators group. The name of any file written to this folder needs to begin with a six digit cart number. The importer will use that number to decide the cart number into which it will ingest the file. Unlike most of the other importers, this one appends the new cut into the existing cart. The final folder says SPHRU031400 overwrites. This is a special importer for the sports program Herd Roundup group. Any file written to this folder will be ingested to cart 031400 and will overwrite any cuts existing in that cart. This makes it easier to ingest Herd Roundup when it is a fully pre-recorded program. That concludes our video on ingesting audio into Rivendell Radio Automation using Adobe Audition 3.0. Our next video covers ingesting audio using Adobe Audition Creative Cloud 2020. Thanks for watching.